what we're gonna be doing now, just basically looking at what an old Nitro magazine looked like. I'm gonna give you my opinions and I guess uh, some memories, I'm gonna throw it in there. Uh, this is gonna be a new type of video for me. I have a bunch of these old magazines. So if you guys really like this, just let me know down in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to uh, do a couple more videos just like this. All right, so here we have an ad for basically nitro fuel, nothing exciting. Uh, I used to run 20% nitro myself at the time, I remember. It was O'Donnell, not this brand. Let's keep going. We have an ad for Proline. So Proline is one of the coolest, I guess, uh, even today's date, manufacturers of uh, Lexan bodies, suspension parts, and wheels, as we can see. I actually run a Ford F-150 body on my uh, Traxxas Stampede VXL. Let's keep going. You have uh, an Ofna Dominator. I never used to have one of these. I actually didn't like the Dominator line myself because it really wasn't uh, much different from a regular 8th scale buggy with uh, larger wheels and tires. This is a Megatech right here. Pretty unheard of brand in the RC industry. This one says it has the Megatech uh, M16 right here. So it was pretty much a regular 0.16 engine. It was pretty high powered at the time. It says one plus horsepower. And I ran it in my HPI Nitro uh, RS4. It was pretty great until it flipped and broke the coolant head off and I basically couldn't do nothing. But I remember at the time this was pretty much uh, you know, a low-end nitro vehicle. I never had any of my friends run them myself. Ah, uh, here we go, O'Donnell, one of my favorite uh, nitro fuel manufacturers of the time. I used to buy this all the time. I think it was like around uh, 20, 20 to $25 a gallon. The gallon would last me for more than a year. Oh, wow, here we go. This brings back some, some crazy memories, guys. This is the Tamiya Terra Crusher. Uh, I bought this brand new when it first came out. It was $400. Um, one of the coolest, I would say, to this day, RCs that I've ever had. At the time, it was competing against, uh, I think, the Traxxas T-Max. Uh, this was even before, I think, they came with a 2.5. So you got to realize, I mean, this, this was a 0.18 when the T-Max was a 0.15 engine. It had a forward reverse, they called it a FRAT, a forward reverse automatic transmission, which uh, would have two gears forward and two gears back, and they would shift uh, on its own. You didn't really have to do anything. There was no kind of third servo. You have these uh, giant, you know, dual shocks on every axis, on every suspension arm, uh, great fuel tank, and the wheels were just enormous. I remember these were just seriously huge compared to the T-Max uh, standard Chevron tires that it came with. Um, here we go, some uh, Losi stuff. Oh wow, here we go, another memory right here. This is the HPI Nitro MT. Uh, also one of my favorite RCs of the time. I actually have one to this day, guys, I know, hard to believe. This was back when they came with the, well, they say updated, the 15 FE. So this is a 0.15 uh, nitro engine recoil start regular uh, rotary carb here. Um, you know, honestly, not a bad engine. It did give me about a gallon out of it, but the construction in itself was ABN. So it wasn't ABC. Uh, it wasn't chromium plated. It was just nickel plated in terms of the sleeve uh, itself. So it did wear out quite quick, but I gotta say very easy to start. No problems ever and never overheated. This was a good kind of a low-end budget stadium truck to get at the time. I actually still like these to this day. We got uh, Thunder Tiger EK4. Uh, this one was popular basically because of this giant engine. So this is a .70. Now you gotta realize a .70 engine is basically huge compared to, you know, before we were discussing the Timia Terror Crusher, which had a .18 motor. Uh, at the time, only really buggies had 0.21. This is a 0.70. So this is a factor of three to four times bigger. This engine was basically the size of engine that they would use in nitro airplanes, uh, 0.60 class of the time. I did see one of these run. They were really, really, really loud. I wouldn't say they were exceptionally fast, to be honest with you. The gearing was pretty much not there. Uh, it did have a lot of fuel consumption, of course. Oh yeah, here we go. A good old Nitro RC10 GT Plus. Uh, cool chassis, cool platform, not a particularly quick RC. Um, I gotta say, it does look faster than they actually were. Um, since it's a rear drive chassis, as you could tell here, um, 
not bad, had a good amount of uh, get up and go, but the engine pretty much was a regular, I think it was a 0.15 or a 0.16 at the time. Um, yeah, actually it was a 0.15, I'm sorry, my mistake. A regular AM radio and you had standard oil filled shocks. And we have some, uh, I guess, pictures of RCs that, you know, uh, readers of the magazine sent in. Always pretty much they featured, you know, I guess, cool looking bodies. I was never personally into the bodies. And the reason being is, you know, the first time you flip it, your body's done. You know, no matter how you look at it. Um, some ads for basic Futaba radios. AM, of course, at the time. We have some, you know, mechanical stuff, how to measure gears properly here. Um, an ad for Ofna. Cool RC brand, although I'm not really personally into buggies myself. I did have an Ofna Hyper 7, really cool buggy, but to be honest with you, the Hyper 7 or Ofna 9.5, they're basically all similar. All right, uh, Atomic, I guess it's just the bodies, don't know much about that. Here we go, oh wow, Ofna um, Mad Force. Really cool RC. So this was one of the first uh, three-speed chain drive RCs right here. So this is actually a three-speed forward automatic um, with a solid rear axle type suspension. Well, I shouldn't say solid rear axle, more of a uh, eight link, I think they call it, or a four link. Uh, so basically it doesn't have the same, you know, dual or single shocks on the A-arms. This would have uh, suspension similar to a real monster truck and that's what they were going with at the time I remember seeing these run really quick, but of course they flipped all the time We have some basic ads right here for uh, nitro engines a glow plug OS engines turbo glow plug OS make some of the best glow plugs in the industry and uh, Obviously here we got a Traxxas TRX point 15 engine and they're advertising the cooling head. And the reason is that engine constantly ran hot, so you really needed to upgrade the cool head at the time. Ah, uh, here we go. Uh, an old ad for the Traxxas line of trucks. Right here on the bottom, we have a T-Max, and here we have an E-Max. I actually used to own an E-Max, uh, one of the original Wide Max models that ran the twin uh, Titan motors right here and it had a single EVX ESC. And the best thing about this truck was actually it had a, it had a, a forward and reverse dual speed shift on the fly transmission. This is, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, the only you know shift on the fly uh, two speed truck there was. So unlike the modern Emaxes of the time, um, where basically you just have a single gear, it's pretty boring. This had a low and a high speed gearbox. So you could shift anytime you want, just with your finger right here. It was basically a third channel uh, knob, and you could just shift, it was great. It had so much low end power, and, and I gotta say, really good high end uh, speed. You could see here, they say it goes 30 miles per hour. Um, nitro speed electric convenience. And you gotta realize this is being run on not lipos today. You know, you I was using basics 1500 milliamp hours uh, nickel metal hydroxide packs, you know, that I think I paid seven or eight dollars at the time on Dower Hobbies, and it still was fast. Of course, runtime, you know, eight minutes, but that's fine. All right, here we go, some more uh, hot bodies stuff. I used to actually have one of the first hot bodies, I think it was this one, in fact, the Lightning RR, uh, basically just a regular. 8 scale nitro buggy, nothing nothing really to talk about. All right, here we go, some other ads, uh, new parts, blah, blah, blah. We're gonna skip over that, skip over this. Uh, you have some basic uh, nitro tuning. And when I say basic with a nitro carb, you guys should know nothing is basic. Uh, you know, unless of course you're just messing with a high speed needle valve. Anytime you have a low speed needle valve, you got issues, especially when you have a um, medium speed needle valve. That's an issue in itself. I usually never mess with those at all. All right, Sen, a totally failed uh, manufacturer in my opinion. I've never owned a Sen, but they have managed to copy RCs really, really well. Uh, so you could see this kind of looks like a Stampede. This kind of looks like an Associate RC 10 GT. This just looks like crap. You know, I'm not even gonna compare it to anything because that would be embarrassing to a real manufacturer. I have uh, had friends have Sen models uh, in the past, and I gotta say, 
they all broke almost right away. And the worst thing about it is, even though you paid cheaper, you could not get any parts. So no parts at all, basically. No parts support from any normal hobby shop of the time. Um, XXX main, basically sticker sheets, you know, kind of uh, raunchy looking stuff right here. Uh, that's how they would market themselves. So off the Dominator, another cool RC, never had it. Don't like the eight scale buggy platform, as I said before. Uh, and if you're doubting me on whether in fact it is an eight scale platform, you could see this is the basic eight scale platform. You have the engine mounted like this. It's always has rear exhaust. The tank is always on this side. You always have like this twin layer chassis. Your servers are always on the right side. Suspension always basically looks the same. Here, the only difference really is uh, larger bumpers and the wheels and tires are, are enormous. Ah, here we go. This is uh, the famous uh, Schumacher, like the racing brand. So, you know, this is, I think, at the time marketed as the fastest, well, it says world's fastest 10 scale nitro truck. Um, they were fast, but really the only reason they were fast is because they had a, a huge .21 engine for a small chassis and insanely high gearing. So, I mean, in my opinion, uh, I think these sold for like in the low four, 400s at the time. See, the ready to run is 450. Uh, that's a good amount of money considering, you know, the time you could have gotten a pretty cool T-Max for I think 350 or so. This is basically a single, uh, I think it was a single speed uh, forward only. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, take that back guys, three speed gearbox. So that's what it is, you know, by the time, I remember reading reviews on this when I was younger, by the time you would hit third gear, you're pretty much, you just ran out of space. Let me put it that way. You know, you, you need a huge amount of space to hit three gears. I'm gonna skip this page, nothing exciting. Here's uh, another look at the Hot Bodies Lightning RR that I said I did used to have before. Basic .21 pull start engine, basic uh, buggy platform. This is what it looks like. Uh, in case you were doubting when I said it looks just like the Off the Dominator. Basically the same chassis layout. Um, I do gotta say it is a fairly robust chassis. That's because it's a basic pan chassis. Uh, you know, solid piece of usually three to four millimeter aluminum right here on the bottom. You have these chassis supports running. They usually mount them however they want. This one has like a, a, a bracket here. Sometimes they have these little strut bars going this way, but that's irrelevant. Basically just smaller wheels on this. Um, Serpent. So this is a really good racing RC. I've seen this uh, being raced on my local Nitro track in Brooklyn. I actually have a video on my channel where I showed you guys the track if you uh, keep up with me. This is a very expensive RC. You could basically just get them as kit forms. You would have to build it. By the time you're all into it, it would be you know over $1,000. So this was as premium as you can get for a Nitro racing. Basically just adds for uh, differentials. I'm gonna talk about that. Let's see what this is. Kind of fold out. All right, so this is um, jumping and RC jumping. I think. Let's see which one this is. Ultimate high. Ultimate RC high. Let's see what this is. So, this is the Ofna Monster Flyer, and the uh, Kyosho Towering Inferno. Once again, similar layout to an eight scale buggy. Not my favorite. Basically, just the wheels and tires make them look different. They're basically, the same chassis. Um, here we go, HPI Jump MT. I think this is the base, they just renamed them. There is no Jump MT. This is a Red Grill or Nitro MT with uh, chassis upgrades. Um, these are custom build RCs from the way I understand it. Uh, so this is a Trax, a Skymax, but there is no Skymax, it's a regular T-Max. They just put in, you know, custom chassis upgrades and uh, certain other parts and call them, you know, jump, jump cars. Um, personally, not into that. Uh, here we go. Uh, for all you guys out there that I think remember back in the day, years ago, it was popular to have your RC decked out in all aluminum. Of course, uh, when you did that, you realized that it was extremely heavy and uh, extremely slow in that regard. And also, uh, as you know, the reason nitros use, well, RCs in general use nylon parts or plastic, however you want to call it, is because uh, anytime you have a metal to metal connection, so let's say you have aluminum and, and and um, like a regular screw right here, you're gonna need thread lock. So here you would have a lot of parts moving and they would just rub up against each other. If you screwed something in too hard, you would just have extreme amount of binding. 
I remember one of my friends decked out his T-Max in all aluminum and then basically, you know, hated it afterwards. Sure, it looked good, but the first scratch you get, uh, you're going to have scratches all over. This is just anodized aluminum. It's not fully colored uh, inside. So once you get a scratch, and you will get scratches if you run these, um, you're going to hate it. These are basically shelf queens is what they were called. All right, so you have another... Uh, Basic, uh, I guess, what is this? A Sen parking lot fun, Sen TR4 RTR. Uh, basically, one of the cheapest RC brands of the time. Uh, eventually, they became a little too overpriced, I would say. So, it says right here, street price is $299. Normal, I mean, not that much cheaper than an HPI, to be honest. With you. Maybe 20 or 30 bucks cheaper. I would never get this compared to a regular HPI. You could even see the chassis layout. Uh, very similar to an original HPI RS4. You have this regular two-speed. Uh, you have the similar set of uh, belt layout, similar engine mounting, and similar bumpers. Right here, best engine in the industry, guys. Um, if you have the chance to get yourself a .15 CVRX, with, it has to be this car with a 10E rotary carb, make sure you get this. I used to run this in my uh, Nitro T-Max years ago. Super reliable motor. Uh, ran very cool, was very good on fuel, never had to be rebuilt. The motor, the carb settings, everything was just so easy to adjust and it held the tune just extremely well. For its size, this engine made, I think at the time, uh, the most horsepower you can get out of uh, any motor, really. At the time, it says right here, I'm gonna read it to you. Um, it says 1.2 horsepower at 31,000 RPM. So that's a huge amount of power from a .15. All right, another Thunder Tiger. Not really gonna talk about this. You could see how kind of basic layout they are. I mean, what is this enormous spring right here? I know it's a throttle return spring, but it's just so obscene. I mean, look at this. Could they have not come up with something better? Well, this pipe is mounted like all weird, just looks weird. These tires, I mean, with a three-speed transmission, this is the one they claim to do 70 miles per hour um, that I talked about before for $450, I mean, look at these tires. These look like they're from a 1980s Tamiya Grasshopper. If anyone knows a 1980s Tamiya Grasshopper, look it up, um, this is what these tires look like. I mean, it's just embarrassing. And I remember at the time, uh, you know, to make this car even close to 70, of course the transmission, the gearing, and the engine are capable of it, but just think about the, st think about the control. You're gonna have no control. You're gonna wreck it on the first time you're going. All right, we have some ads for a Nitro House right here. And uh, basically some other racing stuff. Mugen Seiki. You have a Kyosho V1R. Uh, Kyosho, one of my favorite brands. They're a little bit on the pricey side. I used to own, uh, I forgot which one it is actually at this time. Kyosho uh, Nitro something. But it wasn't this one, it was pretty much a cheaper model. Let's see what else we got. So, pure racing technology. I'm not sure if this has a Sentax clutch or not. Yeah, right here it says, I'm gonna read it to you guys, you can't see it. It says, Sentax style clutch uh, has real performance potential. So this is pretty much a racing chassis. Let's see what else we got. Uh, got some nitro uh, starter boxes. So if you had no pull start on your engine at the time for power and for some uh, lightness, you will have to mount your uh, flywheel on top of one of these things, push the RC down, and this would actually start your uh, engine for you by spinning the flywheel through the bottom of the chassis. Of course, you had huge batteries in here and it was pretty much heavy to carry anywhere. Half the time it didn't even work, <laughs> from what I remember. Okay, so let's see what else we got. We're basically nearing the end of this magazine. Um, so there it is, guys. If you like content like this, I have plenty more magazines. Uh, just let me know. I'll be more than happy to make a couple of videos like this. I have a good amount of knowledge and history on RCs. Uh, you know, I was young when I got into them, and I'm still basically in the hobby, one way or another. I also have a couple of retro uh, actual automotive magazines that I'm looking to do videos on. So let me know if you like content like this or if you've had any of the RCs I mentioned here uh, below. And uh, stay tuned for more next time. I'm gonna leave you off on this perfect um, Yokomo GT4 RTR. 
I did have one of these, one of my favorite RCs. The chassis layout is just, is just phenomenal. Uh, similar to the HPI R40, which came out years after this. But this was, you know, a $300 car with a good engine, with a good radio, and a really nice looking body. And there it is, guys. That's your look at, you know, Radio Control Nitro from October 2002. If you smell it, 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 what the Nitro Gang is cooking. Girl so fine, but her breath is like move. She says she wanna dance, but she don't know how to move. Nitro World Order. Nitro World Order.